Okay, lesson 18, video one. So let's talk about college. Let's say we want to figure out the expected amount that students spend on tuition in college. So we're going to define a few states. We're going to start with Y1. Is it there in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year? And then we're going to assign a state, we're going to call it D or G, which is where they drop out or graduate. So let's say that there is probability that varies going of going from the first year to the second, second to the third, third to the fourth, and fourth to graduate, um, which could be dependent on whether or not they drop out. So you could have somebody go from year one to year two then drop out, and you could also have somebody go from year one and then have to repeat year one or stay in year one and then proceed to year two. So non-trivial on calculating the num amount of time in each state. And let's say we know the tuition for each year. We, if we could figure out the long-term um, expected time to be spent in each of those years, we could come up with an expected tuition cost, even though dropping out or graduating is absorbing. Because let's face it, nobody gets to stay in college forever unless you're a professor, and that's another story. So with that in mind, there are definitely situations where we want to model a process that has absorbing states only looking at the transition state. So let's talk about P being our one-step transition matrix. So that's what we've been doing so far. And now we're going to define PT. And PT is going to be our one-step transition matrix, but only for the transient states. So let's take this example. We've got three classes, excuse me, two classes, four states, 0 and 1, which is transient, right? Because these guys can go back and forth between each other, but once it gets on to state 2, then you're going to stay here in the state 2, state 3 loop indefinitely. So here's our transition matrix. So you got zeros down here because you can't go from 2 and 3 into 1 and 2. And up here there's a possibility that you go to 2 and 3 from 1 and 2. So we're going to define our PT matrix as it's just the rows and columns that have to do with the transient states. So we've effectively stripped out everything having to do with the absorbing states and we're just left with 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.6 which is what we use for our transition matrix. Okay, so now we're going to define SIJ. So SIJ is the expected number of time periods that you're going to spend in J given your system started in state I when we're talking about transient states I and J. So in your system you have a set of transient states. If you start in state I, which is one of your transient states, what's the expected number of periods that you're going to spend there or that you're going to spend in, in state J? Okay, now one more definition. So let's think about this. If you start off in, say, state two, the expected number of time periods that you spend in state two is going to be at least one, right? Because if you're in state two to begin with, you know that you're going to be at state two at the end of the time period. So you've got to start off with at least one time period. So we're going to call delta ij one if i and j are the same and zero if they are not. This accounts for starting in state J. So like I said, you automatically score yourself one time step expected in that state, in state J, if you also started in that same state. Okay, so delta IJ is one if I and J are the same, zero if I is not J. Make a special note of that. All right, now given S and IJ and delta IJ, now we are gonna define this equation. So we're gonna say, SIJ, so the expected number of time periods we spend in state J, given that we started in I, is going to be delta IJ, so that's kind of our magic one for if I and J are the same, that's the same state, plus the sum over the transient states only of the probability of going from starting state I to intermediate st K, state K, times the expected number of time period spent in state J given that you start in state K. 
So we're going to kind of push the SIJ ahead and condition on the probability of going from state I, our starting state, into state K, which is some intermediate state. So this is similar to what we've been doing so far, a little bit different. Okay, so let's take this equation, define in English a little bit better. This is the sum, the sum part of this is the sum of the expected number of the transitions to state J, otherwise known as the sum product of the probability of going from I to K, which for K is some intermediate state, times the expected number of time periods going to from k or spent in j given that you started in k so think about that a little bit rewatch this part if that didn't quite make sense i just said the same thing twice here's an example you can think of it this way so let's say i and all of the k's in j are all transient and i start in state i I'm, to calculate my equation, I'm, first of all, I'm going to add 1, that's my delta ij, if i and j are the same. So if I start it over here. And then I'm going to look at the probability of going into any one of my intermediate possible states, which also could be i, by the way, if it can go back to itself, times the expected number of time periods I spend in state j, given that I start in, in state k. So I kind of score a point here, but I'm conditioning on the probability of getting here. So watch this video again if you need to, and next we'll go on to the matrix math.